now it turns to introduce the third speaker for the opposition in tonight's debate to continue the case for the opposition, uh, Jamie Bryson. Uh, well, thank you uh, for the invitation to speak at this event tonight. Uh, I know that the, the committee has come under uh, tremendous pressure from a small minority uh, of other students and uh, indeed uh, some non-students, uh, but to their credit, they have uh, refused to bow to that uh, mob uh, mentality. And sadly, I, I do think there's a real tendency, and we'll explore this in a few moments, to join in with the mob and dehumanise people and ideas, not because uh, you as an individual have considered them and came to your own conclusion, uh, but rather because it's simply the popular thing to do. Uh, and I think that's a very bad mindset uh, to get into, whereby you blindly follow the latest type of woke fad uh, or the self-appointed liberal standard bearers who tell you what you must like, what you must dis dislike, and which ideas are acceptable and which are not. This proposition, which is put forward tonight, is, uh, in my view, little more than a, a bold assertion, uh, which amounts to uh, practically a, a good virtue signaling hashtag. Because whenever you drill down on it, it has absolutely no logical basis. And further to that, it is actually a blueprint for a type of fascism which oper operates on the basis that a group of self-appointed elites decrees which ideas and speech is acceptable. And you must, uh, all of us, society must fall into line with that or risk a, a social shaming uh, on social media or exclusion from a social group, uh, a, a metaphorical public hanging, uh, and, uh, and this proposition, to borrow a, a phrase from the, the great Justice Scalia, it is a wolf which comes dressed as a wolf. So let's take it apart uh, quite simply. What is deplatforming? Well, deplatforming is preventing a, a speaker or a particular message from being provided a platform. Uh, so I don't think that that uh, can be contested. I think that is, that is what it is. That is what it does. And now we then the next crucial point, who decides which particular messages uh, or which particular views are unacceptable? And of course, it's the proponents of the platforming who decide which views are unacceptable. And in, in that respect, the platforming uh, is a weapon solely for the, the proponents of the platforming. Uh, you're hardly going to get somebody who's opposed to the platforming trying to deplatform somebody. Uh, and in that respect, I don't think it's hard to see uh, where the scope is for that to go badly wrong. And then, crucially, uh, we move on to who appoints these persons to decide who should be deplatformed. And the answer is no one. We we have no system of regulation for uh, deplatforming. No, thank you. Uh, we have no commissioner for deplatforming. All we have, uh, and how we do that as a, as a society, is via the law. Uh, and, and that, in some respects, is, is another debate altogether. So the proponents of this uh, proposition uh, will try, and indeed have tried, to take you on a moral tour, uh, leading you on a, a winding journey, which seeks to give you the warm, fuzzy feeling that supporting the platform is to be part of a, a journey towards something greater, to be part of a, an enlightened elite who are the guardians of, of what is uh, acceptable thoughts and speech. And it's a fantasy. Uh, and like all fantasies, it crumbles under the most elementary scrutiny. Uh, and that is why the fuel for so much of deplatforming comes uh, from Twitter and other social media platforms, which isn't uh, the actual world. It, it is a, an online world. Uh, and therefore, it's no surprise that that, that coexists nicely uh, with the fantasy of being part of an enlightened elite uh, whose apparent legitimacy is derived from likes and retweets as part of a, uh, a perpetual self-affirming process. Uh, and, and this is because Twitter provides a platform for individuals to obtain social status uh, by, by virtue of, of being seen to signal their support for the latest type of woke fad or, or joining in with the, the online mob in an assault on the latest legitimate target, which for the most part is, is someone who some self-appointed liberal influencer has decided is somehow unacceptable. On that uh, point. 
No, thank you. And I noticed in the lead up to this Friday debate that, that actually committee members uh, from, the, from this uh, organisation were publicly informed by a deplatforming activist that they should never speak to that individual again unless they took the, the step of designing their positions, presumably as some form of protest against my mere speaking here tonight. On that. And I think, no, thank you. And I think that actually goes to the very heart. Uh, of this debate, and I want people to pause and consider that. Because when you peel it back, what that actually means is that you must agree with that individual. And if you don't, then you are to be cast aside and you are, by default, a terrible person. And I, I think that does provide a snapshot of the illiberal and bullying nature of the platform. Uh, and that is an example of the extremist logic at the heart of the platforming. What well, the one self appointed person or group of persons can decide that a particular person or viewpoint is unacceptable and that viewpoint must be deplatformed and the person who expresses it must be vilified and dehumanised. And furthermore, everybody must join in this mob lynching into this public hanging, uh, lest you be seen to be complicit or somehow enabling the view of the person who has been subjectively deemed uh, to be unacceptable. And of course, the response to this from the cheerleaders of deplatforming is that they have some societal duty to shut down unacceptable views. Uh, and that, that sounds all very noble and self-righteous. Uh, but what they can't explain is that why they believe that society demands this of them. Uh, have they been appointed by some higher moral authority, uh, which gives them the right to act as judge and jury of what is and what is not acceptable? And that, On that point. But, uh, no, thank you. And that brings me nicely back to the core structural problem with this proposition. Who decides who should be deplatformed and from where do these self appointed judges derive their moral authority or legitimacy? Who decides what the objective standard to be applied is and who, and who monitors that it's applied equally? And there is simply no coherent answer to that. Of course, proponents of deplatforming uh, will go off in all sorts of directions and moral lectures, but bring them back to that core point. Who gives you the right to decide on behalf of society what is acceptable and what isn't? On that point. No, thank you. Ask them four questions. Number one, on whose behalf do you act? Number two, who appointed you? Do you act as judge and jury of which views can be heard? Number three, what is the objective standard you apply to the platforming? And finally, number four, from where does this standard derive its apparent legitimacy? You won't get a logical answer because there quite simply isn't one. We decide what speech is acceptable within society, within the law, made by elected representatives. These laws, despite plainly there being difficulties with many of them, at least have some form of democratic legitimacy. They can at least lay claim to you uh, in some way, uh, reflecting the views of society or uh, at the least uh, of the legislators society appoints. Uh, but most importantly, such laws and in, in theory at least, are to apply equally to all persons. There are safeguards to prevent an arbitrary deployment. And it, but in the hyper liberal world of deplatforming, there's no objective standard uh, there's no safeguards, and quite frankly, there's no legitimacy. On that point. Uh, and no, thank you. And all that is required to initiate this is simply to, to commence a Twitter pylon, and before you know it, you have managed to shut down uh, an idea or a person you dislike without having to, to so much as engage your brain or develop a counter-argument. Uh, and I think such pursuits have the effect of stifling ideas and of stifling free debate across society, uh, which has, has been amplified by the mob culture of Twitter where many people just simply get swept up with whatever's trending uh, 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 and join in with that in order to feel relevant or acceptable. Uh, and they feel they must engage in, 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 in popular virtue signaling or join with the Orwellian two minutes hate like assault uh, on whoever the legitimate target is at that particular moment. Uh, and the problem with this is when it succeeds, as it often does, it affirms the, the mob's belief in the righteousness of their cause and so it becomes a, a perpetual cycle. Uh, and that, as I alluded to earlier, is how fascism comes cloaked as liberalism. Uh, so I've outlined uh, for you tonight uh, the structure of the, prop the proposition is built on. And I say it's built on sand. Uh, and I've also demonstrated for you uh, by recourse, actually, to an example uh, of how the proponents of deplatforming actually turned on the very organisers of this debate, how a culture of deplatforming will eventually implode uh, the mob will eventually eat itself. Uh, and I say to all of those uh, listening or watching tonight, what happens when you have an idea uh, that the Twitter mob or the deplatformers 
deem unacceptable. So, of course, tonight the popular thing to do is to fall into line and support the platforming. It will probably earn you some stripes in your, your social circle and in the echo chamber of Twitter. Uh, but only for now, uh, because, of course, if you have an idea which the de-platformers do not like, then uh, they will quite simply turn their file on you. So if you want to genuinely stand for something, then stand for the right of every person uh, within the confines of the law, of course, uh, to be able to express their views and opinions. That is the noble idea which has survived for generations. Uh, and that is why tonight I urge you to vote against this proposition. Thank you.